apologetics must, must be a part of church discipleship. That's why morality is relative in Americans throughout the West today, because man now determines truth. And I believe that that's why the nation is in the state it's in, because uh, they don't know the Word of God, and because the church has failed, in a sense, to hold forth the Word of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today our guest is Dr. Everett Piper. Welcome. Honored to be here. Thank you so much. He is the president of Oklahoma Wesleyan University and he wrote a book called Not a Daycare, The Devastating Consequences of Abandoning Truth. This is one of the most important books that you could read this year, parents. So true what's going on in our culture right now. Parents need to attend to and they need to pay attention to mm -hmm. what kind of education their kids are getting. Because most schools, whether it's high school or whether it's college, take pride in tearing the heart, mind, and soul out of your kid rather than supporting you in the 18 years of your life that you've been training up a child in the way he should go. You dump them off at a university that in the first 18 minutes starts tearing their heart, mind, and soul out as you drive away from campus. And uh, it's just crazy. Parents are paying money for this and they should stop. Absolutely. So tell us about some of the things that are happening on the university campuses and college campuses that parents may not know about. Well, the premise to the book might be a good place to start. Okay. Um, why did I write this book? Well, it's a response to the Snowflake Rebellion. Now, if people don't understand what the Snowflake Rebellion is, it's the student protests that you see across the nation from Brown to Berkeley mm -hmm. where students don't like an idea. Usually it's a conservative idea. Mm -hmm. So a speaker is invited to the campus. He's a conservative speaker like Ben Shapiro or Dennis Prager or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. And so the students, rather than listening to these contrary ideas, these conservative ideas, they rebel, they protest, they say that they're offended. They demand that there be trigger warnings before these people are allowed to speak. It's just lunacy. It's intellectual fascism rather than academic freedom. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, what I mean is this. Uh, if you remember, a fascist was a Roman bundle of sticks bound together so tightly it couldn't be broken. Mm -hmm. And it's out of that we get the word fascist. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? It means you must be part of the common bond. You must be one of us. You must be part of us. You must think like we think and believe like we believe. And if you don't, we will crush you. We will break you. That's fascism. Mm -hmm. And what you have at Brown and Berkeley is these protests that are shutting down free speech rather than enhancing it. And it's very ironic because Berkeley fancies itself as being the birthplace of the free speech movement. Mm -hmm. Well, they clearly aren't because any contrary idea, they shut down through student protests and rebellion. Mm -hmm. The snowflakes are melting and therefore uh, they're demanding safe places, safe spaces, counseling centers, etc. Believe it or not, some of them are even providing counseling centers for students that are offended that include Play-Doh, coloring books, bubbles, and videos of frolicking puppies to make these poor 18-year-olds feel comfortable rather than make them uh, realize that a university should be a place to be confronted and build character rather than be made, for, made to feel comfortable. Poor babies. Yes. Exactly. Babies, right? Well, that's... They aren't growing up. Exactly. It, you know, any good parent knows that maturity involves tension. Mm -hmm. It's called cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. And if there's dissonance and you've got the right balance of challenge and support, mm -hmm. that a person will grow. But if you give them too much support, coddle them, comfort them, give them a participation trophy, there's no reason for anyone, you, me, a 48-year-old, an 88-year-old, or an 18-year-old to ever grow if there's no dissonance, if there's no optimal balance of challenge and support. Our goal as parents, as preachers, as teachers, as professors should be to promote that growth rather than giving students this false sense of comfort. Mm, yeah. But how about if they send their children to a Christian college? There's a handful left that actually believe in the inerrancy of Scripture and in the objectivity of God's truth. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been asked many times by parents, how do I decide whether or not this Christian college is the right one for me? And I'll say this, it's very simple, pull the president aside, and if he won't meet with you, don't go there, you're spending too much money. So number one, pull the president aside and ask him two simple questions. What's your view of truth, and what is your view of scripture? Be quiet and listen. Does he say that truth is an objective reality given by God, a revelation of God, a self-evident truth endowed to us by our Creator? Mm -hmm. Does he say things like that? If so, good answer. If he doesn't, it's not because he's stupid. It's because he just doesn't want to answer your question. 
Because if he believes that truth is a postmodern construct, it's a construction of society, of culture, where we just kind of get together and have a group hug and have a conversation and come up with our own truths over time, mm -hmm. it's a terrible answer, which is what most universities believe today, even Christian universities. What's your view of truth? The second question is, what's your view of Scripture? Is Scripture inerrant, infallible? Is it the authoritative Word of God? If it doesn't say that, don't send your kids there. Now, I've added two additional questions in recent months when I've been asked this question. It's what's your view of marriage and what's your view of life? Mm -hmm. Is marriage a sacrament of the church? Is it defined by the church? Is marriage defined by God or is it a function of government? Mm -hmm. Obviously, one answer is good and the other is terrible. Mm -hmm. And then what's your view of life? Does God define life or does Planned Parenthood? Mm -hmm. All right. So there are real critical questions in assessing whether a Christian college is going to be true to what you believe a Christian college truly represents. And unfortunately, I would argue that there's a handful left that are going to answer correctly. And there are a lot of them out there that put together a nice four-color brochure. I can't remember who he was exactly, but it was a Catholic priest or perhaps a, um, a bishop or somebody of that sort. But he once said this, wolves in sheep's clothing are dangerous, but wolves in shepherd's clothing are downright deadly. Mm -hmm. So we need to be very attentive to that admonition that wolves in shepherd's clothing actually can kill the heart, mind, and soul. In addition to the Snowflake Rebellion, tell us why you wrote the book and you know why, why what you're saying is so important. Well, okay, so you've got the problem. Mm -hmm. It's the snowflakes. And they're so precious and they're so fragile that anytime there's any controversy or heat, they melt. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, you know, they're calling for safe spaces. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the reasons I wrote the book is, first of all, that's just crazy. It, it makes no sense. It's antithetical to what the liberal arts institution is supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. the, the history of the liberal arts institution, if you want to go back a thousand years to, let's say, Oxford, is an education for liberty. That's what the word liberal used to mean. It was right. an education for liberty, liberation, mm -hmm. and freedom. So a classical liberal was somebody who believed in human freedom and human liberty, mm -hmm. okay? Now today, we have these institutions that claim to be liberal arts, which are anything but that. They don't believe in human liberty and li in human freedom. They don't even be believe in the human being anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't even agree on what the definition of being human is any longer. Mm -hmm. So human liberty and human freedom is not the goal of the academy anymore. Actually, it's propaganda and it is the perpetuation of a constructed worldview rather than a revealed worldview that's given to us by God. So why did I write the book? Because there's consequences to these ideas. The reason we've got our kids rebelling and being silly in the Snowflake Rebellion is because they're acting out on the ideas that we've taught them. We've taught them narcissism and self-absorption for the last 30, 40, 50 years. Why are we surprised mm -hmm. to see that they're narcissistic and self-absorbed? I mean, of course they're going to behave consistently with the ideas that we inculcated. Garbage in, garbage out. What you teach in the classroom is going to be practiced in our culture. Mm -hmm. So the reason I wrote the book is to confront these terrible ideas. Richard Weaver wrote a seminal work in 1948. He titled it, Ideas Have Consequences. Mm -hmm. And what was his point? Ideas have consequences. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying throughout the whole book. Mm -hmm. And if you teach bad ideas, you're going to get bad culture, bad kids, bad community, bad government, and even bad church. But if you teach good ideas, you're going to get the opposite. Good church, good community, good government, and good kids. And Weaver wrote that in 1948, and that's important to this anecdote. Why? Because he was looking backward just a handful of years to World War II, the Nazi Holocaust, and the Nazi regime. Mm -hmm. He was looking backward, and he was telling his German culture, we should have seen this coming. We created this monster through our colleges, through our universities, and through the bad ideas we were teaching. Ideas always have consequences, mm -hmm. and we bore the negative consequences through the Holocaust because of the ideas we taught. And it seems to me that when you teach the way they're teaching now, where it's got to fit into this little mold, then those students, as they grow, are going to be much more easily led in culture and society. Well, they're not being taught to be thinkers, and they're not actually interested in debate, mm -hmm. which is the irony of our time. They claim to be champions of tolerance. Well, they're the most intolerant. They, in fact, they actually say stuff like, I can't tolerate your intolerance, which makes no <laughs> sense, obviously. So they wave this banner, this rainbow-colored banner of love trumps hate, but yet mm -hmm. they show an angry red face of love? No, mm -hmm. it sure looks like a f face of hate rather than a face of love. 
So their worldview is self-refuting at every turn. Mm -hmm. They say, I can't tolerate your intolerance. I hate those hateful people. I'm sure that nothing is sure. I know that nothing can be known. I'm absolutely confident there are no absolutes. I mean, these are crazy statements that you hear in the academy. It's like watching a dog chase its tail. It would be funny if it weren't so sad, but smart people say this stuff. Yeah. And the way to correct it is to just ask them a good rhetorical question. You just sit down and rather than argue with them, just say, can you tolerate my intolerance? And just see what they say. You seem to be awfully angry at conservatives. You seem to hate those hateful people. See what they say. Yeah. Sooner or later, they'll see that their worldview doesn't work. They're mm -hmm. sawing off the branch upon which they sit. It's going to mm -hmm. come tumbling down. Some of them are honest enough to admit it when confronted with it. Wow. So what can parents do, especially with students as they're coming up, like through high school or junior high, where they're getting the bad ideas even now? One of the things I strongly recommend is uh, two programs. One is Worldview Academy. Mm -hmm. It's headquartered out of Texas. They actually go to college campuses across the nation during the summer, and they conduct one-week boot camps in biblical worldview apologetics for 14 to 17-year-olds. I actually sent both of my boys to Worldview Academy when they were that age. Mm -hmm. It's a great and important, and I would say a required thing for parents to do today if you want your kids to be able to stand in the face of the storm. Mm -hmm. Worldview Academy. We actually have one that's conducted on our campus the second week of June every year. Mm -hmm. Worldview Academy for 14 to 17 year olds. The second one I would recommend would be Summit Ministries mm -hmm. out in Colorado Springs or close to it. That's a two week boot camp wor worldview training for older kids, like let's say 17 to 18, 19 year olds. Mm -hmm. So Worldview Academy and Summit Ministries are critical. And then I, I would say, don't send your kids off to these schools that continue to teach this pablum. Find a good Christian university that's going to honor your biblical worldview as a parent and make sure you pay for that and you don't pay somebody to tear your kids' heart, mind, and soul out. You mentioned people getting, giving participation awards mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So, I mean, that starts really young. So how can parents kind of change the way they're doing things from the very beginning you know, it's difficult, and I will even, I'll be a little self-critical here. You know, I obviously believe passionately in what I'm saying, but I found myself even as a parent, because I'm parenting in the same water, in the same environment, in the same atmosphere as everything else that's going on in culture, and I was being tempted into being a helicopter parent, much more so than I should have. Mm -hmm. In other words, when my son was suffering an injury on the, on the court or on the field, I'd want to run into his rescue. Mm -hmm. And I think parents need to recognize that the way their moms and dads parented them and the way their grandma and grandpa actually modeled parenting is a lot better model than this knee-jerk reaction toward helicopter parenting that even some of the good Christian parents are, are, are buying into. Mm -hmm. I actually had a parent call me at Oklahoma Wesleyan a couple years ago, great Christian dad, mm -hmm. and he wanted to complain about his son's experience on the baseball team. Well, he wanted to complain about two things. One, his son was going to was trying to steal third base from second. He was on second base in the game and he went to try to steal third and he got thrown out. Mm -hmm. And the coach criticized him and mm -hmm. said, you're an idiot. Well, I thought to myself, if I had a dime for every time my coach called me an idiot, <laughs> I'd be a wealthy man. But the parent was very offended yeah. that our coach called his son an idiot. Mm -hmm. Well, you could argue that maybe our coach should have used some other challenge than call his boy an idiot, but I would also argue that's not all that inflammatory. That's yeah. the way coaches communicate with their players. That was a stupid thing to do. You didn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. Don't do that again. Right. That's the way a player learns to not make the mistake again. Yeah. Now, his son also was a catcher on our team, mm -hmm. and he was playing. It wasn't that he wasn't getting playing time, and the parent had a second complaint. He said, my son's thighs are bru bruised because he's taking too many pitches in the dirt. Well, if you're a catcher on a baseball team, that's your job. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's your job. You're a, you're, you're a backboard, you're a, you're a backstop. You're supposed to take the catches in the dirt. But this parent was angry because his, the coach called his boy out for getting thrown out at third and because his thighs were bruised because he was, the pitchers were throwing too many pitches in the dirt. Now, this is a good dad. Yeah. This is a great dad. Mm -hmm. And his kid was a great Christian kid, but it's kind of an example of this helicopter parenting that right. I think can backfire. Yeah. 
Well, is there anything that you'd like to say to the viewers as like a kind of closing statement? Truth matters. Ideas matter. Ideas have consequences. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to invest in your kid's life for 18 years, and I've said it twice now, I'm going to say it a third time. If you are going to honor the scriptures and train up your child in the way he should go so that when he is old, he will not depart. After 18 years of doing that, why would you abdicate your responsibility and now send the kid off to an institution that is going to take pride in the first 18 minutes while you're driving back home mm -hmm. in tearing that all apart and tearing that all out? 70% mm -hmm. of our kids, 70% of our churched kids mm -hmm. lose their faith before they become juniors in college. Yeah. Don't roll the dice. Don't play with those odds. Recognize that a biblical worldview is important, even more important at the collegiate level, perhaps, than it was in the earlier years, because you have no influence over them anymore. They're not under your own roof. They're not at your dinner table. They are going to be under somebody else's charge. And I would hope that we would understand the wisdom of finding one of those handful of institutions that still believes in the primacy of Christ, the priority of Scripture, the pursuit of truth, and the practice of wisdom. And we'll pay for that rather than selling our sons and daughters down the river by sending them to an institution that believes opposite to everything we've taught them. And I want to support what you're saying because it happened to me. Mm. When so. I went to university, I totally was duped because first off, the teaching of evolution. Mm. And so, yeah, parents listen to them. It's really true. Yeah. Well, thank Even you back when I went to college. Where can they find you online? Oklahoma Wesleyan University at www.okwu.edu. You can follow me on Twitter. It's Dr. Everett Piper, and that's D-R-E-V-E-R-E-T-T-P-I-P-E-R. -E 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 okay. Thank you so much for Thank being you. our guest. I know I have